Hey there, people. Hope you're doing fine in these challenging times. My name is Ben, and today I'm going to teach you some strength training for divers, cave divers, technical divers. You cannot really underestimate the value of strength training, of having physical strength. Because when we go to the water, no matter if we are recreational divers, if we are uh, technical divers, if we are cave divers, we always carry heavy gear uh, to the water. So one tool I found for myself very, very useful to gain physical strength was heavy weight training. You can go running, you can do a lot of cardio and that is perfectly fine. It is very important to do a lot of cardio training, to go for a run, to go biking, to go hiking and all that stuff. Still, when it comes to really heavy gear like double 12s, double 18, rebreathers, stages, scooters, all that fancy stuff, you really need some physical strength. And what I usually do uh, in my strength training is training with kettlebells. The reason why I chose the kettlebell is because it's a very, very nice tool, especially my traveling instructor fellows have sometimes the problem that they cannot go for training even if they have the time there's no uh, gym there's no facility they can go to to do heavyweight training so the only training they usually do as cardio training as running that's basically most of the instructors the traveling instructors i now are mostly doing that kind of training for the personal fitness. It's hard to increase your strength, your core strength. And I always recommend kettlebell training because it's really efficient. You don't need to do like hundreds of repetitions. Uh, a usual kettlebell training is around 15 to 20 minutes, maybe plus a little bit warm up, maybe a little bit stretching afterwards, but the training itself it's like 15 to 20 minutes. So this is usually my setup I use for training. Let's see some, some of my kettlebells. Uh, these are the ones I usually use. Uh, they range from up like 36 kilos uh, down to down to uh, like 18 pounds or eight kilos. Uh, so the heaviest ones are uh, 48 kilos. Um, I think the lightest ones is like four. Um, but as a recommendation, an average male individual should go for like 20 to 24 kilos. Most women should go for like 16 to 20 kilos. If you're really strong already, then you can sure go a little bit higher. Then maybe you saw what I'm usually wearing uh, while I'm training with kettlebells. I'm usually training barefoot or if you cannot really go barefoot or you feel uncomfortable to go barefoot, you can at any time use these kind of shoes. Um, they come from Vibram and some different brands. Uh, five fingers. Uh, so we like the five fingers because because they make perfect contact to the floor, and uh, that's just perfect for um, for training with kettlebells. Now, in these corona times, where many people are sitting at home in home isolation and they don't really have, uh, have kettlebells at home, I came up with uh, an idea because every diver, at least in my opinion, has some kind of weights at home. So, in this video today, I'm going to teach you the weight belt swing. 
So when it comes to the white belt, you can just prepare it for today. Uh, you can just grab a white belt and my recommendation, usually in my classes, I always tell students, get off some weight because most of them have too much weight on their belts uh, during the classes. Today, as a very special day, I tell you to put on more weights to your weight belt. Uh, as I said, uh, male individuals should go for like 20 kilos around. If you're really strong, you can go for more. Females should go for 12, 16, up to 20 kilos. Sure, if you feel confident with it, you can go higher at any time. Um, but let's not overdo it for the beginning. So, my recommendation would be get your weight belt like this and just get it through um, through the paces of, of weight, just like that. And what I feel is the best solution is to turn the buckle inside out, just like that. Turn the buckle inside out, just like that. So wrap it like this. And you should make sure that this is pretty snug, pretty tight, pretty short, because we don't want it to really hang around, dangling around. So if you go like that your hand roughly fits in, that should be perfect. Maybe a little bit more, so we have a good grip on your weights. And now we should go and do some training. So there are a lot of different exercises you can find on the internet. I really recommend, if you are interested in that kind of training, look for a qualified instructor. I personally can recommend two organizations, uh, which are the RKC and SFG. I'm going to upload this video session to my YouTube channel. You find uh, the link to my YouTube channel in the description as well. And on YouTube, I put some more information in the description of the video so you can review the video uh, and you can find a lot of information on my youtube channel uh, just make sure to visit it and subscribe to the channel so as i said there are many many different exercises but my go-to exercise my exercise i would pick if i could only pick one exercise for the rest of my life would be the kettlebell swing the benefits the kettlebell swing has, especially for diving, is that it has, it gives you a lot of core strength and it's relatively easy to learn. Still, just as a short disclaimer, before you start training and you're not 100% sure that it's for you, then you should definitely go see a physician and get some medical advice on kettlebell training and you should not only learn from videos like this from youtube you should go and get an instructor that is capable of correcting mistakes uh, you make it's the same with diving you sure can learn diving you can increase your trim your stability on all that stuff just by yourself Still, it's easier and it's better to do it with a, qual with a qualified instructor. So the same as I 
recommend to see your local GU instructor for diver training. Go and look for a qualified kettlebell instructor. Uh, I personally recommend the RKC as an organization or Strong First. Uh, I put links in the description of the video so you can definitely find it. What we gonna do now is just a really short blink into kettlebell training and it's just to give you some idea for the time in isolation and maybe you take this idea you get here uh, in times of the corona crisis and take it to your personal training after the crisis when we go into the water again. As written in the announcement you need Basically two things, the white belt with your weights and some kind of like stick or like a broom, uh, like a broomstick or uh, any kind of stick. Uh, one short remark, uh, with all strength training, at least in my opinion, it's always quality before quantity. It is better to make five repetitions correctly than a hundred repetitions that are all crap. And it's the same like in all our GOE diving, we talk about efficiency. And that is what I really like in kettlebell training, that that is really efficient. No matter what you call it, like the Pareto principle, Occam's razor, uh, the 2080 rule, whatever, it's always the same when it comes down to 80% of the results are made by 20% of the effort. And the same applies to kettlebell training. That's why I really like it and why I really recommend it. So a lot of talking, now let's start. <clears throat> so first we start with a little bit warm up. Uh, warm up the arms, make big circles. Circles getting smaller, 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 smaller. Turn your hands and backwards. Bigger, bigger, bigger. One arm clockwise, the other one counterclockwise. Some coordination training. Doing the other direction. Very nice. Start like this. Feet like almost shoulder width, and then turn around. Turn around. And now with your leg, very nice. So we do a little bit planking. That's always a nice thing, and it all um, and it also helps to get very good body tension. So go down. So go down and go for a plank. Make sure you're not doing this. Make sure you're not doing this. Be like this. Head is an extension of your back. And we go for like a minute. If it's too much, you can at any time go a little bit shorter on that. Okay. 
So next thing, we do some climbers. Oh, just have a look that my microphone is working. Hope everything is fine with that. And we do 20 repetitions. can do it anytime, some more. If it's too much, you can do a little bit less, no problem. Now, try to go down. Now we go down like this. Make sure your feet are still on the ground. Don't go like up with your heels, go down. If you fall back, you can grab your, your weight belt and hold a little bit. Make sure your back is almost straight and just wait, sit there. A couple of seconds. Okay, and we can do some a little bit uh, mobility exercise. Take your stick, whatever you have, whatever you can find. Other direction. Keep this in reach. You should make sure that your back is straight. So don't bend over, always hold your back straight and uh, your head is the extension of your spine. You can use this one always to check. Maybe you have somebody with you that can check. So if you go down in all the exercises from now on, we go like this. So you have fixation points, your head is on the stick and your back, your lower back is on the stick. We do it like this. The whole idea of the whole idea of the kettlebell swing is more or less to swing the kettlebell, to swing a weight, whether the kettlebell or the weight belt, between your legs. So you have some acceleration force that pushes uh, the weight away from you. So you need all your core muscle to hold it really tight to work against it. And that's the reason why we don't need like a 30, 40 kilos of weight. Sure you can do, but you will find some really nice uh, results with just like 20, 24 kilos. And that's, that's something, uh, that's a weight everyone has in the diving garage just in weight. So, Keeping this in mind, the movement itself, the movement itself is if you hold your hands and place it here uh, around the height of your hips, like here, and then you more or less, you basically go back. It's more like this. So you're not going like this. Stand still, feet almost the width of your shoulders, and then you go this. 
If you do this, always remind your back. One thing we will never hear me telling in an actual TUE class is keep your head down. Usually, all the time, instructors say keep your head up. Here, your head is the extension of your spine, so you hold it like this. Don't do like I always do, because I'm so trained to it, I always do this, but that's not correct. Keep it here. And you really should make uh, sure that you extend backwards. So if you go like at a wall or like the bookshelf I have here, you stand with your back at the shelf, go one step forward, something like that, and you go back, you should hit uh, the shelf, like this, like that. Critical points, go back, don't arch your back too far, don't go like this, don't go like this, have your back straight, head is the extension of the spine. Make sure that your feet are stable on the ground. And make sure that your knees are not doing this. So don't go too far over your feet. You should be your, have your knees always above your feet. Something like that. Something like that. Now, if we're in this position, we can take uh, the weight belt. Place the weight belt between your feet. So I'm standing more like this. Not like this, not too far. Place it like this. It's the same with a kettlebell if you have one. If you have one for this exercise, we stand like this. And now we want to do a kettlebell deadlift. We want to do the kettlebell deadlift. That means I'm standing right above my weight and I'm going down like this and I grab my weights. And now I want to deadlift it. If you do it, make sure that your shoulders are packed. What I mean with shoulders packed is you go down like this, you grab the handle of your kettlebell or the weight belt, and then it's like if you have the handle of a kettlebell, you try to bend it, like to break it in this direction. So you try to bend it. So with a kettlebell, we do it like With a weight belt, the same, standing here, go back, grab it, bend your arms, and then When it comes to breathing pattern, you should inhale while you're going down and exhale while you're going up with, with a relatively lightweight kettlebell it's not so it's not extremely important but having these heart style breathing pattern helps to protect your back so if you can do it really do 
the hard style breathing pattern. It's really like hardly exhale. And this itself is just one exercise. Just one exercise for itself and you can easily do it to strengthen your back and the core. So let's do it. Go for 10 repetitions. Go for 10 repetitions. Wonderful. Wonderful. <clears throat> Next, we want to go into that swing. Therefore, we just remember the movement of the deadlift. Very important. Back straight. Like that, go backwards, like this. Important points, head, shoulders, and your lower back, like this. And now we stand like we did before above our weights and now we step back like around one feet back and as you know i'm coming from germany we don't measure things in feet or fingers or chains or whatever we use the metric system now i really mean one length of a foot and now we try to make one swing so we go like this go down make sure you bend, uh, you bend your handle of the kettlebell, you bend the bell itself. Head is extension of the spine. And now we just lean a little bit back and we do one swing. Just swing it like this. Important points. Speaking of extension of the swing, you should make sure that your arms are around in this position. So your elbow a little bit higher than your leg. Don't be too far. And don't be too far up front in this position. It's not like this. Be like this. So, it's your turn. Ten swings of that. One. Now, 
you did some of the swings. And this itself is an exercise you could use just to train for your diving. Now we would like to combine the deadlift movement we did before. <laughs> this movement combined with the swing movement. And that gives us something like Make sure head is extension of the spine, your back is straight, remember the stick. And if you go down, your hip goes back. Let the weight, the kettlebell, the weight belt fall. So you're doing, and then it falls down, and you set it down. Just one swing at a time. Just watch me, the same we did before. Head is extension of the spine, back straight, bend your, your horns, bend your handle, and now, When you come up, make sure you get some tension in your back and your uh, legs. It's the same I always show in classes. Body tension, that by the way, helps you in diving to keep your knees up. Don't let your knees down. It's the same, uh, it's the same muscle now. You get some tension, uh, some tension in your buttocks. Uh, and tension in your stomach. So if you have another person that I can check, should be really uh, should be really tight in your stomach and your buttocks. So if you go up, make sure that you have a good tension in your buttocks and a good tension in your stomach. Going like this, and now it falls. Make sure. And that's the kettlebell swing, the white belt swing. It's a little bit easier, I feel, with uh, the kettlebell because it's made for it uh, than the weight belt. But if you don't have a kettlebell, you can easily use your weight belt to do that. As I said before, quality over quantity. Don't overdo it. I would recommend set of uh, 10 kettlebell swings at a time, then, then a short break of like 20, 30 seconds, and then again uh, 10 kettlebell swings. If you go out, look for the internet, if you go out, look on the internet, you always find like kettlebell swing competitions, people doing 10,000 kettlebell swings a day. In my opinion, that's a little bit overdoing it. Uh, you will see some very good results if you do every day like 50 kettlebell swings. So five, 10 repetition of sets. Uh, 10 repetition sets like I did. It's an extremely versatile exercise. It gives you a lot of strength in your buttocks, in your stomach, a lot of core strength. 
And that is very helpful first underwater to keep your legs up so that your GOE instructor is not always complaining about your knees and tells you to strengthen your buttocks. Second, it gives you a lot of core strength. That means that it's easier for you to carry heavy tanks, to carry heavy scooters, uh, stages, all that stuff, and just be in that, in that equipment. Just climb up a ladder on the boat, all that stuff. That's an excellent exercise. And this would be my uh, go-to exercise if I could only pick one in, my, in the rest of my life. So from now on, do every day 50 kettlebell swings. You can do more if you like, but it makes no sense. Remember the 2080 rule, 80% 80 of the results are made by 20% of the effort. So for most of us, 80% of the results are just fine. As long as you are not a professional athlete, it's perfect to get 80% of the results. Uh, and it's easily done. You can do it in like 15 minutes. Uh, just do your swings and you're done. You can go uh, get it in some kind of morning routine. So just if you get up, first thing you do is five reps of 10 kettlebell swings. 10 weight belt swings, whatever, uh, and then you have a good thing to start your day. Still, at any time you can go running, all that stuff you are doing anyway, but when it comes to strength training, especially if you're anywhere in the world on the go, so if you're on holiday or if you're working abroad, if you're a diving instructor and you're working, and you don't have the opportunity to go to a gym to do heavyweight training to increase your physical strength, you can just, at any dive center in the world, you can easily get like 20 kilos of weights and a weight belt and do this exercise. There are many other exercises usually people do with kettlebells uh, where the kettlebell cannot be replaced with a weight belt. But the kettlebell deadlift and the kettlebell swing are exercises that can easily be done with a weight belt. So I hope you enjoyed the video, you learned something new, you uh, learned something you can do to increase your physical abilities uh, during this crisis thing where we cannot go diving. Still, even if you can't go diving again in a few weeks or months or however long it will take, um, it's very nice to do this kind of training to gain some physical strength. If you have questions, just leave a comment. Uh, you're gonna find this video on my YouTube channel. Uh, I put the link in uh, the description and on my YouTube channel you will find successively more videos about training tips uh, and I'm doing some kind of gear review. A lot of interesting stuff is going on there and I use the uh, corona crisis to uh, put out more content on my YouTube channel so you can find it uh, there link below uh, and on my YouTube channel in the video description. I think the video will be available uh, around tomorrow or something. I need some time to load it up. Uh, but on YouTube you will find some more links to manufacturers of kettlebells. At least for this kind of training you can replace the kettlebell easily just with a weight belt. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions just leave a comment or find my Facebook page. Uh, 
Benjamin Ott, GOE instructor. You can find my Facebook page. You can write me a message and I will answer your questions. If you have any recommendations on training and how to improve this kind of online lectures, kind of, then please, please, please leave a comment and tell me because I cannot improve without your feedback. Uh, so I'm very pleased to read any of your comments on this video. Thanks for watching guys and see you next time.